Hello everyone, this is Trace O'Brien with Tier 1 Crane. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video. I'm going to try to consistently upload more videos moving forward. It just, things get busy and time flies. So I do have a list of different videos that I'm going to start releasing that I think will be extremely effective and helpful for anyone in our industry. So let's get started. This first one is called Working with Wind. And in this video, I thought it would be important to go over wind and how operations are affected and then regulated because of it. Wind is one of the most dangerous aspects when working with cranes, whether you're rigging, operating, dispatching, managing, etc. You need to understand what steps to take and how to approach windy conditions with cranes. As a crane operator, it's your responsibility to shut the job down if unsafe windy conditions exist. Everyone on the ground and around you are depending on your judgment to make that correct call. A poor judgment call could result in devastating consequences and potentially loss of life. There are no gray areas with wind. It's either safe to operate or it's not. Don't let personnel on the ground or in the office pressure you into a potential disastrous decision. But what exactly would be considered unsafe conditions with wind? At what point would it be a must to shut the job down? There are four steps, in my opinion, that you need to have a clear understanding of before making that decision on whether or not to continue operations in moderate to severe windy conditions. The first one is to understand federal regulations. On here I have OSHA listed. Of course, every country is going to be regulated under some different regulatory body right whether it be OSHA in the US or any other country there's going to be something related to it and understanding those regulations is going to be a great first step the second one is to understand your company's policies regarding wind the third step is to understand the limitations of the particular machine you are operating And the fourth one is to make the ultimate decision to operate based on the job scope. So digging into the first one, and this is based off OSHA, of course, here in the United States. OSHA considers winds that are exceeding 40 miles per hour as high winds. If the work involves material handling, high winds can be considered at 30 miles per hour unless the employer takes precautions to protect employees from the hazards of the wind. Personnel platforms. When wind speed sustained or gusts exceeds 20 mile per hour at the personnel platform, a qualified person must determine if, considering the wind conditions, it is not safe to lift personnel. If it is not, the lifting operation must not begin or if already in progress, must be terminated. Understand your company's policies regarding wind. Some companies have a specific wind speed at which operations must be shut down. This is set for a reason and operating when winds exceed that speed only means you're putting yourself at risk. Many companies will just refer their wind restrictions slash allowances based on the machine's requirements. Also, make sure to communicate with the customer on their policies regarding wind. Their policy would supersede the crane company in some cases. So definitely extremely important to understand your company's policies. I've heard of companies that at 25 miles per hour, regardless of the configuration of the crane or what's being lifted, you have to shut the job down. You cannot work 20 miles an hour, um, different situations like that where the company's policies step in. Now there's also companies and many that I've seen that just are referred directly to the actual machine and its capabilities in the wind. And that's what their policy is. So if the crane says that you can operate in 35 miles per hour, that's what your policy is. That's what the company's policy is. That's very typical. But either way, it's really important to understand whatever company you're working for and how they regulate it. Number three is understand the limitations of the particular machine you're operating. Every crane has a specific way to determine when it is acceptable or not acceptable to operate in wind. Let's take a few minutes and go over a couple ways wind is regulated by manufacturers. 
So here's an example of what a wind restriction load chart might look like for any manufacturer. Every single crane is going to have something like this. It might not be a chart like this. It might just be verbiage. It might just tell you shut the crane down at any certain speed. For this particular example, it's an actual load chart type example. At the top, obviously, it's going to be listed as wind restrictions. Off to the left, you're going to have the capacity reduction amount. It's listing all the maximum wind speeds. Right here is going to be just your main boom between 40, 60, 61, and 110, and 111 and 160 feet. Then slide over, you've got it now with your main boom and the 20 foot fly jib with those same main boom amounts. Everything below those is going to be what you're rated for. So we'll just start here for main boom between 40 and 60 feet. If you slide down, anything between 0 and 28 miles per hour, if you have between 40 and 60 foot of boom, you are in regular operation. You're not being restricted at all. Now, as soon as you slide down one more and the wind meets or exceeds 33 miles per hour, the crane must be derated by 50% right so now whatever you're good for must be cut in half once it meets or exceeds 38 miles per hour now the crane must be reduced at 65 percent and then anything over 39 miles per hour you mustn't exceed any operation and you can continue down this chart all the way to the very end where it'll show the 20 foot fly jib with 111 to 160 foot of boom to give you the exact amount of wind that you can work with. Of course, there's gonna be notes at the bottom. Additional capacities are a must for loads that are lighter and have a larger surface area, more likely to be reactive to wind, kite effect. So what it's saying is it's, it's not accounting for these loads, right? Where you're gonna be lifting like a wind wall or some sort of really light, like a sign or something like that, that's really gonna catch and pull the crane something with a very basic load that it's talking about you need to account for more if you're lifting something more hazardous when wind speed for regular operation is surpassed the operator must add five degrees to all minimum boom angles due to no load stability and shall not boom down below that angle okay so moving on now off to the left here, I have a wind speed conversion table. This is important to have, I think, for every operator. Just as a quick reference, a lot of load charts will list meters per second, so to be able to convert that on the fly is just really handy. So the main portion here is just another example of a different type of format or layout that you're going to see when looking for wind speed regulations. Now, this is literally just the load chart to a particular crane. And what you'll notice at the very bottom highlighted here is the maximum permitted wind speed for any one of the configurations. So just like any other load chart at the top, it's got the counterweight, outrigger spread, you know, swing away, pull the offset for the swing away. And as you come down, you've got your different main boom lengths and per each section of boom, the percentage that is out for that configuration. And then as you continue to come down, you'll see the rated capacity for each one of those. And then below that, it's gonna list that wind speed. So for example, if you've got 175 foot of main boom, with this current configuration of boom sections, as you continue to go down, you'll see that anything for this 175 foot of boom configuration wind column, you're rated at 18 miles per hour max permitted wind speed scoot over to the 177 foot configuration slide all the way down no matter what your radius is again the max permitted wind speed is 14 miles per hour then anything with 190 foot of boom or more the max permitted wind speed is 12 miles per hour this is typical for groves on how they're going to list the maximum permitted wind speed it's really easy to reference in the load chart but this is just another way to utilize that manufacturers will list maximum permitted wind speeds. In this slide, I kind of wanted to just go over an example of high winds shutdown procedure for a crawler crane. 
they might list it this way. If wind speeds are between 20 to 34 miles per hour, stop operations and follow the procedure below. Lower the load to ground level and remove it from the hook. Set the boom angle at approximately 61 degrees. Swing crane so it will take wind at the rear, counterweight side. Place the load block at a safe height. Then lock swing in winch functions and turn off engine. So this is to no particular machine. I just listed these as an example of the shutdown procedure for a crawler crane. This is gonna be a very typical shutdown procedure. It's gonna be similar in a lot of different crawler cranes to how I just listed it. But this is just something that you need to look for or understand when working with wind with a crawler crane. It's very basic. You need to understand the particular crane that you're in because it's going to be different. Even if it's the same manufacturer, it's very possible that it's different. Even if you have two cranes, same manufacturer, they could be different. So you need to understand that particular machine's exact shutdown procedure when working with wind. Crawler crane. Example of high winds shutdown procedure. If wind speeds are more than 35 miles per hour, stop operations and follow up procedure below. Lower the load to the ground and detach. Lower the boom to the ground. If swing is a must, swing at approximately 62 degrees. Lock all functions once boom is resting on ground. Shut off engine, exit to safe area. Again, this isn't specific to any crane. This isn't my specific instructions. This is just an example of what you might see in the load charts and how important it is to understand what the shutdown procedures are when working in high or severe winds. So here you'll see this colorful chart. This is actually the Beaufort wind scale created by Francis Beaufort in 1805. Now it might seem funny, especially with all the technology we have now to determine different wind speeds, but this is still a widely used and effective tool to understand wind speeds, especially when you don't have things like an anemometer or something to track the wind speed in your immediate vicinity, right? In fact, you'll find this in some, it might not be the exact one, all of them are a little bit different as far as some of the verb, verbiage, but you'll find this in some of your load charts where it talks about wind on different machines. So definitely effective and important to read over. Obviously, you know by sitting in the cab, if you see different things like dust and leaves and loose paper lifted and twigs moving, you know that the wind is starting to pick up, but this scale gives you an exact idea, well, not really exact, a rough idea of what the wind speed is depending on what's happening outside, right? And when you're inside the cab, you might not have a good idea. Wind can pick up fast. So if you see small trees swaying or waves forming on a lake, you have a pretty good idea that the wind's gonna be between 19 and 24 miles per hour. At that point, might be a good idea to get with somebody else, the site supervisor, whoever, to determine exactly what the wind speed is on that job site. But no matter what, a very good tool and something to reference, assuming you have no other way of understanding what the wind speed is outside when operating. So here is just a photo that I have of an example of what might be a hazardous situation working with wind. You can see this crane has all of its main boom and its swing away fully erected as well. The more boom you have, the more jib you have, typically your allowance for wind goes down, right? Now on top of that, you can see that this load is hazardous as well. This is a conveyor that's well over 200 feet long. It's light, it catches the wind very easily. This is the perfect example of a lift that could go horribly wrong with severe wind, right? Even with mild wind, it could be the wind rating for this particular situation might be 10 miles per hour. When you lift up on this conveyor, and let's say you start to swing into the wind, it might show that you're holding twice the amount of weight because that wind is having such a massive effect because that conveyor is just like a kite catching it, right? So maybe when you're picking it up in this particular spot, it might not be so bad but maybe the wind's coming from your rear and now you're gonna start swinging into it. Those are things that you have to take into account when operating, right? Right here, you might be just barely good for it or you're 
you're well within comfortable, whatever the case may be, once you start to swing and pick that up, and maybe those silos aren't blocking the wind as much as you continue to cable up, all that's going to put a additional load on the crane in the boom, pushing it sideways, right? So just like the load, load chart stated, it's really important to understand the job scope of what you're doing. And that just because the crane says that you can do the job with per the amount of boom that you have in the wind doesn't necessarily mean it's safe per the job scope. Each and every situation is going to be different and you have to act accordingly. So that rolls us right into number four, which is make the ultimate decision to operate based on the job scope. Just because the crane can make the lift in wind based off the wind restrictions in the manual doesn't necessarily mean it's safe to move forward. What are you lifting? Is it light, long, awkward? Are the personnel waiting to receive the piece in a dangerous area with limited room? Is the piece being flown to an area much higher than ground level? Wind speeds can be much higher at heights than on the ground. As the crane operator, you're in charge of everyone's safety on the job site. Operating in unsafe conditions risks your life and people on the ground. Reach out to someone more experienced or your superior if you're still unsure after consulting manufacturer's requirements. Each crane has different procedures for operating in wind. Be sure to follow those procedures and relay that information to the supervisor on site to take the pressure off you when shutting the job down. Anemometer is obviously highly recommended. Look over the Beaufort wind scale to understand how to measure wind. Again, these steps are just, in my opinion, the best way to go about working with wind. Just as a disclaimer, these are all just my observations from working in the field and how I personally would go about handling it. You obviously need to discuss this with your company or whoever you're working with on site and the particular crane that you're working with. But anyway, I hope this video was effective for you and is gonna benefit you moving forward when working with wind and hazardous conditions. And if you need additional training, head over to tier1crane.com. I have multiple online courses for all mobile cranes and Rigger One that could help further prepare you for any CCO tests. See the link in the description below and please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.